Love and greetings to you. I'm Paul Friedman, founder of the Marriage Foundation. And this topic that we have today is a killer. It's very difficult topic to talk about, but I want to help you. I don't want to just talk about what it means and all that. It's my husband has a girlfriend. So you should understand where I'm coming from. I used to be a divorce mediator and a couple asked me to help them save their marriage instead of dissolve it. And so I did a deep dive. And way back in the beginning, as I just made these amazing discoveries, because you're not going to be discouraged by this video, I'm going to give you hope. I wanted to take care of the worst possible cases. And that happened because the people who fed me my clients when I was a divorce mediator were the ones who ended up sending me their worst cases, the ones that they knew they couldn't save. Literally, I had someone call me from New Haven, Connecticut. I was living in Encinitas, California, San Diego, California. And she said, my husband, they were both professors at Yale University. And she said, my husband has taken up with a student of his, they are now living together. Oh my God, but I wanna save my marriage. Can you help me? I said, I don't know, but we can try. And so we worked together and I'll be honest with you, that's where I learned a lot of what we now have in the courses because what happened was I was starting to see through discussions with her, which I don't do anymore, that was a long time ago, I started to see all the nuances. What was keeping him with his girlfriend, what she was doing that was keeping him with his girlfriend. And I call her his girlfriend because they were still married. He didn't, he didn't pull the plug. And in your case, probably he's even still living with you. Those cases have become, I don't want to say easy. You have to do a lot of work with the course. But again, I used to speak with people. They would call me and, you know, it was $400 an hour to speak to me because I wanted to discourage people. Now it's like, okay, if you donate a thousand, I'm not trying to get you to call me, by the way. But if you donate $1,000 to the Marriage Foundation, because we're nonprofit, I would spend an hour with somebody. But you don't need that. You need the course. And here's what is going on. What's going on, and this may hurt, because in your mind now, you want to blame him for everything. How dare he leave me? How dare he threaten our family and the kids? How dare he behave in this way? And when you do that, what you're doing is you're completely ignoring the reality that when he married you, he didn't want to have an affair. He wanted to be with you the rest of his life, right? Not only did he say that, but he meant it. And if you look back, you'll realize you guys were totally in love and you couldn't even see how this could possibly happen, right? So what happened? Well, the number one killer of marriage that I saw all the time and still see it is over familiarity. And that's literally the beginning of it where you start taking each other for granted. And I'm going to tell you something that is a truth. And I always get flack for saying this, but I don't care. It's a truth. Men are more sensitive than women. You know, it's true. Women tend to fall into emotional stuff easier than men, but that doesn't equate with sensitivity. Men are very sensitive. And when their wives treat them in any way, and you could use it another way, men have bigger egos than women. It's true. And so what happens is, when a woman mistreats her husband, and I don't mean big time, even little ways, men 
tend to like close off their heart, shy away, become intimidated. We don't hear about this because it's become a woman's world, but it's the truth. And if you think about it, you'll realize what I'm saying is absolutely true. True with your husband. He was pushed out of his relationship with you. And so he sought love somewhere else. That's the bottom line. It really is. He sought love somewhere else. That part, you know, that's the truth. The question is why? The answer is so obvious. And if you were standing back in my position or any objective position, you would say, well, he wasn't getting it at home. And that's the truth. Now your mind immediately is going to want to come up with excuses. That's what minds do. And part of the process of bringing them home is for you to learn how to control your mind. Believe it or not, we never hear about that because it's unknown. You know, we have learned all about marriage from movies, TV, and Western psychology, which is wrong about almost everything. But you have to learn to control the mind. That's part of our course, learning how to deal with the anger, learn how to deal with the emotions, learn how to deal with the sense of uh, despair, all of it, because all of that is the mind. What does your husband want? Are you willing to say, you know what? I had a part in this. We really should be together and I'm going to take the lead here and I'm going to transform our relationship. And guess what? And this is what I discovered with the professor in Yale. The other woman, because that's what she still is. She's a homewrecker. She doesn't have a chance. She cannot compete with you. She can't. You're the mother of his children. You're his soulmate. She's who he went to because he wasn't getting what he needed. Now, has it happened where we have failed? Yeah, it has. Where it has been going on for years and years. And the wife that we're working with is desperate, quote unquote, she says she is, but she doesn't do what's necessary to be convincing. And here's another really big deal. It's not enough to change your ways. It's not enough. Why? Well, I always use this analogy. If you have a cat and you have a bird in the cage, the cat knows that while you're around, it has to leave that bird alone. I actually experienced that. I had a parakeet, I had a cat, and when I'm around, the cat is purring, sitting there, ignoring the bird. And then one day I hear this big thing and the cat had jumped on the cage. But what if, and you can't do this with a cat, but a human being, you can change who you are. Meaning that the behavior that you want with your husband has to come from your depths. And this is one of the things that sets us apart, the Marriage Foundation, because we show you how, through controlling your mind, how to change yourself. We don't tell you what you have to change into. That's up to you. You'll know, but we show you how. Yeah, we let you know you should be completely loving. Now, here's the good news. Here's the benefit. And, and kind of the bad part. This has happened. Your husband has a girlfriend. Can't get away from it. My husband has a girlfriend. Got it. So, you can kick him out of the house or you could leave, whatever. What will you have gained by doing that? You have to ask yourself. You may satisfy your ego and I'm going to throw the bum out. How dare he? You can do that. What have you learned? That men are dogs? We know that. 
So what? What you need to learn as a human being, and this may be in your mind going a little further than we should with the marriage foundation, but the truth is that as human beings, we have the actually the same goals that we have when we get married. We want to be happy. That's what we want. We want love. It's what we crave. And we want harmony in our lives. Marriage is the microcosm of the world. We bring our world down to marriage. And so we create this sacred space of marriage just so that we could achieve those goals. They're noble goals. They're right goals. They're what God wants us to have. Well, you need to change yourself. So it's a twofer. By changing yourself, you're going to draw your husband back to you. How often does it work? It's easier to say, how often does it not work? Rarely does it not work. Rarely. I'm going to say three cases out of a hundred aren't able to do it. And I'm not going to make excuses as to why, because I don't know why. But most of the time, our process, it's very mechanical. It's very scientific. It works. It worked with the woman I worked with at Yale in New Haven. How long did it take? I worked with her for almost a year. And what happened was he started coming by more and more often. And then pretty soon he was home again. It was beautiful. It takes a while. There's a lot of work to do. It's not going to be instant. But can you have your marriage back? That should be the question. My husband has a girlfriend. Can I have my marriage back? You can't have the old marriage back. You don't want it back, but you could have an amazing marriage. That's what you can have. So <laughs> I hope this was helpful. I hope you see what I'm talking about and I hope it makes sense to you. And I hope you realize that this is totally sincere, totally real, totally works. So, we're the, new, we're the new way for saving marriages. I found these things out. They're real, they're good, they're positive, and they work. That's the most important thing. I founded the Marriage Foundation. I'm Paul Friedman. It's kind of interesting how that happened. You know, I was a divorce mediator. So when I wrote my first book, I, I would speak at Second Saturday, which was a, a support group for women who were getting a divorce because I would pull my clients from there to get them to have their marriage back. And it worked so often. And my friend, uh, his name was Robert, ex-Navy SEAL, and he read the book and he said, Paul, and he wrote out a check for $1,000. He said, let's go to the lawyers. Let's start a foundation. This stuff has to get out there. And I think we are the cutting edge. He thought we were the cutting edge. And the people who have taken the course believe in us. They, they know that it works. And I hope you do too. And if you're a therapist or clergy, and we've had many therapists take our courses and many clergy take our courses because we're, we're a very spiritual organization. No religion, but it's spiritual. And that resonates with people. So if this works for you and, and you're a therapist, take a look at our marriage counselor training because we want to build a large cadre of marriage counselors out there, not the ones who do grief counseling and this and that, but real marriage counselors. And we're going to have big programs and get the word out. And God bless you. And thank you for stopping by. Now you could subscribe to the channel <laughs> and like and like the video and God bless you and take care.